the toughest tasks facing any filmmaker is giving audiences a character they can relate to and remember fondly, whether frontline A-listers or more modest yet equally unforgettable supporting players. Developing a character for audiences to latch onto takes time, and often directors will workshop their characters by subtly testing them out in a prior movie long before audiences have any idea what they're looking at. Beloved heroes, iconic sidekicks, and small yet distinctive bit part players have all been sneakily introduced to audiences years before they showed up in their more familiar form. From secret debuts cleverly hidden in plain sight, to characters whose histories were retroactively altered by subsequent movies, these characters were all around far longer than even eagle-eyed viewers ever expected. I'm Ellie with What Culture, and these are 10 movie characters who debuted much earlier than you think. Number 10. Doug Up Pixar has a habit of including playful visual nods to their upcoming movies in their prior releases, but even accepting the studio's habit for clever easter eggs, Doug was lucky enough to basically get a glorified cameo in Ratatouille. Some two years before Up was released, Doug appeared in Ratatouille as a canine silhouette which chases rat protagonist Remy around. The dog's shadow appears on screen for only around a second, but its shape is unmistakably identical to Doug. Quite what the adorable doggo was doing in Paris, however, is another mystery altogether. Together. Number 9. Han Lu, The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift Starting as the mentor of Sean in Tokyo Drift, Han Lu managed to become a mainline member of the franchise despite dying midway through his first film. I mean, by his first film, obviously it wasn't, because that's the whole point of this list. Back in 2002, Sung Kang starred in Tokyo Drift director Justin Lin's crime drama Better Luck Tomorrow, and his character here was called Han Hu, apparently the direct inspiration for Han Lu in Tokyo Drift. A popular fan theory has persisted for years that these Hans are in fact the same person, and it's one which both Kang and Lin support. If true, that makes Better Luck Tomorrow a prequel to Tokyo Drift, and thus part of the Fast and Furious universe. Number 8. Dr. Hank McCoy, X-Men The Last Stand Dr. Hank McCoy, aka Beast, aka Blue Frasier, is one of the most beloved of all the X-Men. Kelsey Grammer took the role initially before handing over to Nicholas Holt for the more recent prequels. But Beast actually made an incredibly sneaky Easter egg appearance earlier than The Last Stand, seen on a TV in a bar three years prior in X2, X-Men United, played by TV actor Steve Basic. Franchise director Brian Singer originally intended to include Beast in the first X-Men film, but he ended up cut due to budgetary constraints. As Mystique is seducing one of Magneto's prison guards in a bar, a current events program is seen on a TV set in the background and on the panel, one Dr. Hank McCoy discussing mutant rights. Clever! Number 7. Edward Brill Lyle, Enemy of the State it's not much of a secret that Gene Hackman was cast in the role of Brill as a callback to his iconic part as surveillance expert Harry Call in Francis Ford Coppola's 1974 classic The Conversation. But the two roles actually sought together quite neatly within the same continuity, what with the character's proximate physical appearance and similar paranoia about being recorded. The fact isn't lost on Tony Scott's film either, which features an NSA file photo of Brill that's literally just a picture of Cole from The Conversation. It is in no way a leap to suggest that that Call might adopt an alias in order to stay off the grid, and nothing in either movie contradicts the other, so this is about as close to canon as you'll get without a formal confirmation. Number 6. Mr. Harrington, Spider-Man Homecoming Mr. Harrington is actually Martin Starr's second role in the MCU, having first appeared as an unnamed college student credited as Computer Nerd in 2008's The Incredible Hulk, which was almost a decade before he was in Homecoming. Starr's nerd is briefly seen interacting with Bruce Banner in a computer lab, and though the film's novelization named him as comic book character Amadeus Cho, no cinematic interference has ever been made to back this up. After Homecoming's release, fans quickly came up with the theory that the nerd was instead a young Mr. Harrington. And then, during the press tour for Far From Home, Marvel bigwig Kevin Feige confirmed that indeed the two are one and the same. Number 5. Earl McGraw, Kill Bill Vol. 1 do you remember the Texas Ranger who investigates Kill Bill Vol. 1's Wedding Chapel Massacre? It's a small but memorable part for the veteran character actor and regular Tarantino collaborator Michael Parks. And now if he does look familiar to you, then that's because he also cropped up in Kill Bill Vol. 2 as an entirely different character. But weirdly, he reprised the role of McGraw in both Planet Terror and Death Proof. And yet, what a lot of people missed is that McGraw actually originated many years 
years earlier in Robert Rodriguez's 1996 vampire flick From Dusk Till Dawn, also played by Parks. But if you did want to draw some sort of shared universe narrative from that, well, best of luck to you because he gets shot through the head by Quentin Tarantino of all people at the very start of the movie. Number 4, John McClane, Die Hard. Before we start, I can already hear the voices, yes, this one is just a teeny tiny bit of a cheat. But the source inspiration for Die Hard's plucky protagonist first appeared in the Frank Sinatra starring 1968 neo-noir movie the Detective. You see, the first Die Hard is based on the 1979 Roderick Thorpe novel Nothing Lasts Forever, which is a sequel to Thorpe's 1966 novel The Detective. Both of these books revolved around private detective Joe Leland, as played by Frank Sinatra in the movie adaptation of The Detective. But owing to contractual obligations to that film, Fox then had to initially offer the lead role in Die Hard to a 73-year-old Sinatra, which he, uh, which he turned down. Then with free reign to then tweak things, Leland was transformed into John McClane, Bruce Willis was hired and an iconic action franchise was born. But fundamentally, John McClane is basically Joe Leland with a different name, so yeah, it counts. Number 3, Machete, Grindhouse. Though Robert Rodriguez's 2010 movie represented Machete's mainstreaming coming out party, many were first introduced to him via the hysterical fake trailer Rodriguez shot and included in Grindhouse a few years earlier. But even that wasn't the beginning. Rodriguez may be best known for his ultra-violent, gloriously insane action thrillers, he's also responsible for directing all four movies in the hit Spy Kids franchise, and bizarrely enough, including Machete as a minor character in these family-friendly movies. Machete is referred to as Uncle Machete in the original 2001 film and typically shows up for a cameo in each subsequent movie to help the heroes out. Number 2, Peter Parker, Captain America Civil War. Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, is no stranger to the movies, though it's fair to say that most fans will agree that Tom Holland's portrayal of the web-slinger within the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the most authentic and well-acted iteration to date. Holland's Spidey debuted in Captain America Civil War in 2016, and has since become one of the franchise's most beloved superheroes. But in 2017, a fan theory started doing the rounds that Peter Parker was in fact the young masked boy briefly seen in Iron Man 2 way back in 2010, standing up to Justin Hammer's drones before Iron Man himself intervenes. It's a theory that was seen and supported by Tom Holland, and Homecoming director John Watts then suggested the theory to Kevin Feige himself, and the studio decided to go with it. And the rest is history. Number 1, Jungle Julia, Death Proof. Death Proof again here where we see radio DJ Jungle Julia's life come to a horrifyingly gory, untimely end. However, as obsessive Tarantino fans will tell you, this wasn't the first time we'd seen Julia in one of his films. Tarantino's incomplete 1987 film My Best Friend's Birthday includes references to a character called Unruly Julie, who happens to be a rival DJ to Tarantino's protagonist Clarence. Putting two and two together, and yes, well it's obvious, Unruly Julie is Jungle Julia. But if that's too easy for you, then there's a further theory that Julia appears in the Tarantino-penned Natural Born Killers as Julie, the assistant to boisterous tabloid journalist Wayne, played by Robert Downey Jr. It certainly requires a little creative imagination on the part of the viewer to thread a through line for the character across these movies, but given Tarantino's noted love for calling back to his prior works, it also shouldn't be ignored. And that concludes our list. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.